This video demonstrates the flow as is relevant to the SD access wireless integration via DNAC. DNA controller or DNAC is an enterprise SDN controller that provides user interface management abstraction via multiple service apps and simplifies the SD access deployment story, including the wireless integration component. The workflows are sectioned into four subsections for easy understanding. The discovery involves discovering existing underlay devices using CDP or IP address ranges. Design is around designing network hierarchy, defining global network settings, and creating wireless profiles. Policy integrates the ICE policies for dynamic user or device to group mappings and provides a single management platform to configure additional information like tags and group based policies. And finally, devices are provisioned to enable configuration to be pushed to switches and to the wireless LAN controllers. Let's now go through the flow as is relevant uh, to an SD access wireless deployment. The first step before we go into discovery, design, policy, and provisioning is to configure some of the basic system settings. So from DNAC landing page, click on the gear icon and go to system settings to configure ICE. DNAC must be able to communicate securely with ICE to be able to download scalable group information like tags and policies. Here, click on Cisco ICE and configure settings to add this as a AAA server. To ensure that this goes through on ICE, make sure that PXGrid services are enabled to accept new certificate-based accounts. With that done, we can now get started with the design of our network. Under Network Settings, DNAC allows you to configure common resources and settings that can be stored to be reused throughout the system. Things like AAA, DHCP, DNS, device credentials, IP address pools, and SSIDs can be configured here. DNSC provides a robust design application to allow customers of every size scale to easily define their physical sites and site hierarchy. A hierarchical format composed of building, site, and floor is not just intuitive, but also removes the need to redefine the same resource in multiple places when provisioning devices. If DNAC has internet connectivity, you will see a world map and the site elements will be placed accordingly on the map. DNAC will support both manually entering IP address allotments as well as integrating with info blocks to learn of existing IP addresses already in use. In this demo here, we have manually created two IP address pools. As we go further into the demo, we'll see how these pools are used for host onboarding. The next important aspect of design is designing your wireless LANs and where you want these SSIDs to be broadcasted. Creating an SSID is a two-step process. First, create a wireless network by choosing the type of network and assigning a security type. And second, create a profile. Under this profile, add sites where you want this SSID to be broadcasted. We'll now look at the policy components of DNAC. Click on virtual network to view groups belonging to the default group, or you can also create a new virtual network and assign policies to it. Click on the registry tab to view user and groups information that is downloaded from ICE. We will now create contracts. Click on the add icon to open the contract editor. In this example, we'll create a contract with the permit action for a specific protocol. Next, we create a group-based access policy. We'll use the contract created earlier 
prioritize scalable groups because a contract is nothing but a permission between scalable group tags. Go to Policy Administration, Group-Based Access Control. Provide a name for this policy, select Source and Destination Scalable Groups from the available list and move them to the right side. Click on Add Contract and select the contract that we created earlier. In the back end, what this does is it pushes the policy that we've just created using these steps to the Identity Services Engine, which you can verify by going into ICE, Work Center, TrustSec, TrustSec Policies, and verifying the policy matrix. In DNA Center, the discovery tool is used to find existing underlay devices using CDP or IP address ranges. Use the discovery name and type in the IP address of your wireless LAN controller and switches in order to discover them on the network. You can also specify credentials and connection protocols from the same page. Similarly, you can follow the same steps for the switches in order to discover them on your network. Once the devices are discovered, you can use the Device Inventory app to view the network nodes discovered all in one page. When you enter the Device Inventory page, all the devices should have device status set as reachable and last inventory collection status as managed. Next, to provision sites, we will begin by selecting the wireless LAN controller using a single click. Once selected, we'll choose the action Add to Site and assign it to the location where the WLC is physically located. Once device is added, click on the Provision action. In Provision, we will add AP locations that are managed by this wireless LAN controller. In this case, the wireless LAN controller manages APs in two locations. Next, review the configuration and click Deploy. Once you click Deploy, this configuration is pushed down to the controller. System details, global settings, SSIDs, and managed sites will be pushed as part of the wireless LAN controller provisioning from DNAC. This includes global configuration like the AAA DHCP and DNS servers, SSIDs that are tied to the site that are managed by this controller, and country codes corresponding to the managed AP locations. Next, we will follow the same steps for switches by selecting the switches, adding them to a site where the switches are physically located, and finally provisioning the switches. Once DNAC is aware of the devices and where they reside, you can proceed with the fabric configuration. Click on Select Devices and Add Nodes to the Fabric. To add a device to Fabric in specific capacities, just click on the device and add to Fabric as a border node or a border control plane. For the controller, simply select Add to Fabric. Hit Save and the wireless LAN controller is added to Fabric and pushes Fabric-specific global configuration to the controller, such as Global Check to enable Fabric and Map Server configuration. Click on Host Onboarding on the top of the screen to start enabling the IP pools. Select the address pools for APs and turn on AP Provisioning Poolbox. Similarly, for clients, select Wireless Management Poolbox and assign it to the SSID. The AP pools are associated with the macro which is pushed down from DNAC to the Fabric Edge port when it det detects that an AP is present on the particular port. At this time, the AP will obtain an IP address from VLAN 3000 or higher and register to the wireless LAN controller via one of the standard discovery mechanisms, either plug-and-play or DHCP option 43. 
The APs will now show up under the devices, so it's time to provision the APs. Select the APs and click Add to Site. Next, select the APs from the device list and provision the APs. At this point, you can choose the RF profile associated with the access point. Configuration is pushed down to the access point. The access point reboots and rejoins the wireless LAN controller. In the back end on the controller, an access point group will be created for each site. Further, the WLANs and APs associated with each site will be added to the respective AP groups. The Fabric Wireless is now set up and clients are ready to be connected to the Fabric-enabled wireless SSID.